Welcome friends, I'm in the garden. I have lots of plants that I want to try to get in the ground. Lots and lots. I did not grow as many seeds as I had wanted to this year, so I bought plants. But I tried to buy them cheaply. It's May the 4th. Anybody got their Star Wars gear on today? friends right behind me here. Over there just uh, munching away at the grass. I was down in South Carolina recently harvesting things from my garden, which one of them was this really large um, that I have. Beautiful. I also brought just a few of my strawberry plants up and I put them in this tub on Tuesday. So you can see they went in there and some of them right and pinned. Some of them were already a little bit eaten. But I'm going to get those in the ground. Hey! Trying to do some farming. Look at my beautiful, huge sage plant that I brought here from South Carolina as well. So I want to get him in the ground. He's starting to blossom out, and it smells so amazing. <laughs> Oregano, sage, and strawberry. What a crazy um, combination of things that I had in this tub. And I also brought up just a little bit of my compost. So yeah, I'm trying to get my garden ready to grow things. Last night, it was night before last, last night. Last night, it was it was down into the 30 degrees. So I'm glad I didn't plant anything before that. But I'm going to be prepping this bed for a bunch of tomatoes. I've got Roma and some Bonnie's because these are Bonnie's plants. Um... Those are some of my starters, and I've also got some other ones, upstate New York. I am in southwest Virginia, so um, I'm really close to the Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia melting pot there. So today I went and got some jalapeno peppers and some banana peppers, and I also have bell peppers. And here's my beautiful view of the Clinch Mountain Range here behind me and my no-dig garden that I just have started this year. Um, bought this property in January. I got up here full-time in March. So it's been slow going getting everything together. Where are y'all from? Holler at me for where you're at. Other than that, I'm going to be moving plants. But add your questions and I'll come back. Um, you can, so the black one, they call Big Black. And this is Baby. And they both have... Um, well, one of them has on their little fly masks, and they're just hanging. These are my neighbor's horses, but they also roam part of my property because I bought it from her. So just hanging out here with the horses and the chickens and my goats and pony, and one of the dogs is out here with me. 
and you guys are here with me. So that's awesome. I'm glad to have y'all. I have um, compost soil that I have brought up here from South Carolina, from my garden back in South Carolina, which was much smaller than this. Um, but I've been not really wanting to buy terribly much soil because, you know, and I have been utilizing soil off the property. And now I'm um, just going to put a little layer of compost down before I start planting all of these many plants that I have. Um, this was really cool. I found these are nine packs that I found at the um, farm supply right near me. Normally you see the six packs and I paid six dollars for this six pack making them a dollar a piece but I paid seven dollars for this nine pack. So less than a dollar a piece for my plants which is pretty good since I didn't get I was moving during the time that I would have like planted seeds. So I did plant some they're just late and they're letting these be. So who here has a garden this year? Anybody gardening this year? Let me grab my farmer tools. tools. Are you in Tennessee? No, I'm close to Tennessee. I'm in Lebanon, Virginia, which is about 45 minutes north of Bristol. At nighttime, I could actually see the um, Bristol city lights uh, right over my mountain. So uh, about right in here, if I look out my front door at nighttime, you can kind of just see the city lights over the mountain. So just, uh, Real, real close to Tennessee. Don't take me long to get there. It does look like Tennessee. I have uh, a lot of people tell me that. So, again, Clinch Mountain goes all the way to Knoxville, I think. So, this same mountain goes from here north east a good ways. So, um, it's all the same mountain. I had uh, friends that were looking at property in Tennessee and they were actually going to be buying on the side of this same mountain, but it was an hour down the way. It is a lovely view. That's the only reason I'm here, is to uh, enjoy this view every day. I enjoy it so much. It makes me very, very happy. If you have any friends that like gardening, um, be sure to connect us because I'm learning. I've been gardening for five years, but I definitely, um, not to this caliber. I have a huge um, gardening section here. For me, it is very large compared to what I have done in the past. I'm going to have three rows starting up here, one more kind of where I'm currently standing, and they'll run way down there but I'm only doing um, I'm doing no dig gardening for the most part and then I'm also going to be doing this like herb spiral thing I watch a lot of YouTube videos um, I always say that if you have goals in your business or personal life that you're trying to accomplish just surround yourself with like-minded people 
And it's always much easier to do that now with the technology in the world because you can just watch YouTube videos from successful people who do the same thing that you want to do. And, or even if it is a new concept, you can still um, find people that can encourage you to do the things that you need to do. So that's what I've been doing is watching lots and lots of gardening YouTube videos because I bought this land up here in the mountains, rural Virginia, um, in a very, very small county, and I left a very populated area in order so that I could get my hands dirty more often.
A little bit of both. Doing a little bit of both. Trying never to work too hard, you know. I did that for far too long in life, and uh, it didn't gain me a whole lot. So now I work doing the things I enjoy, and today that's moving dirt. Thank you. Getting ready to plant a bunch of plants today and tomorrow. Today's date for the Farmer's Almanac is that it's a very fertile day for above grounders based on the phases of the moon. And uh, I've been gardening five years. I have not tried this type of gardening, so I figure definitely try something new. Hello. So I'm in um, Virginia, Lebanon, Virginia. I just uh, purchased this property. I'm from upstate South Carolina. And hello, Minnesota. Ah, nice. Another Virginia person. That's right. I'm getting to know, like, all my areas. Like, I know Washington County's below me. Scott County's that away, because I, um... I'm really close to Scott County, not, not too terribly far from it at all. I'm actually on the far, far side of Russell County.
Hey there, Florida. So I did get some jalapeno peppers, way more than I will ever use. So I was looking up ways I can dehydrate them and turn them into jalapeno pepper powder, which looked awesome because I would probably love to put that on everything. Hello, Michigan. Up there. It's how, how cold is it getting down in northern Michigan today? Hungry Mother Park. I'll have to look that up. Beautiful day, 40 degrees. It was warmer here. I, um, last night we were down in the um, high 30s, though. I'm sure it's much colder way up there. But I'm excited to start planting my garden. <laughs> oh, man. I am um, being from upstate South Carolina. It gets pretty hot there too. So I'm excited to see uh, for being in Virginia. I'm excited to see there's just about a 10 degree climate change from where I was to where I am now. So I'm uh, I'm excited to have slightly cooler summers, but it feels super hot up here on the mountain when the sun's a blazing because there is no shade over the front part of the property right here. It is super hot. Can you plant tomatoes? Yes, I can. I actually have tomatoes to plant. I have some aromas and some slicing tomatoes and I wanna get some cherries. I planted some, but I was really late to the game, so they're tiny. I'll have to wait for a little while before they're ready to go in the ground. I'm gonna plan to have a much bigger greenhouse next year. I didn't get it done in time this year, but yes. I plant tomatoes. Do you plant tomatoes? Y'all like my lightsaber earrings? It's May the 4th, so I've got on my little bit of uh, Star Wars gear. I think everybody should garden in their Star Wars gear on May the 4th. Where am I located? I am in Lebanon, Virginia. Russell County, Virginia. It is a very nice area. Fried green tomatoes is um, like one of my favorite things ever if they're done right. And also my, like, my mom is one of her favorite movies. Colorado. Hey there. I would love to visit Colorado. One of my places I want to swoop to when I do a cross country trip. I want to do a, a trip where I go up kind of Colorado and run down to Utah and such. You can plant tomatoes from seed. I, I plant them. I planted seeds. Normally I would have started my seeds between February and March, but um, I did not get that done this year um, because I was moving. So, but normally I would plant my seeds February and March and plant tomatoes by that. That's how I did it in South Carolina. I did plant some tomato seeds. I planted Brad's Arms. Have you heard, ever heard of Brad's Arms tomatoes. Anyway, they're like a little multicolored cherry tomato that's like purple and yellow and green. And I've planted them the past two years. 
um, from seed and they're very prolific. Look at all my, look at all my little strawberries. I'm going to get them in the ground. In addition with my strawberries, I have some thyme and I'm also going to put some asparagus in there. Ghost peppers, I have not. I don't like things too spicy. So um, I know a lot of people that do, and I know some folks that make hot sauce with them. You're in South Carolina? Wow. I bet, or bet you know some people I know. Brad's Arms. They're Brad's Arms. You'll have to look them up, something like that. Um, but they're a cherry tomato, and they're, they're kind of longish, and they're purple, and green and yellow and very multi multi-colored tomatoes and they will just grow and grow definitely like trim those guys back it'll give you a better harvest otherwise they get just really really leggy and they'll be all over the place like a vine what's my favorite tomato plant right now i'm just trying to get better at growing roma tomatoes because i tried that last year and they failed mostly because i didn't spend a lot of time with them I find that if you spend more time with your plants and you talk to them, they do better. And I didn't do that last year because I was moving. But I need to turn it this way so you can see the view out this way. Yeah, I don't do I don't do ghost peppers because of that. I don't I know people who do them, but I keep it fairly simple cooking peppers. Not, not anything too spicy because I just don't do spicy all that well. I'm going to try to sit this right here while I plant my strawberries so I can talk to y'all and plant at the same time. I do have a beautiful view. That's why I want to show it to y'all whenever <laughs> I'm on live. Like, here, check out the view. Let me find my shovel. I'm back. There's different varieties of strawberries, but these uh, strawberries I bought here at the Rural King definitely don't tell you what variety they are. Here I'm planting some strawberries along with some thyme plants that I already have gotten in the ground. And tomorrow I'm going to put just a little um, asparagus intermingled in there because I've heard those are good companion plants. And um, I'm doing a lot of companion planting this year to... Um, just have a little bit more uh, variety instead of the rows and rows of the same thing. So doing a lot of companion planting. So right now, getting some strawberries in the ground. Some that came up for me with me from South Carolina and some that I bought from the store. have to eat at pals we have seen pals and uh, I normally just cook I'm a pretty good cooker so I we eat here on the mountain a good bit but when we go to town we have seen the pals and have said we need to give that a try um, we did go uh, my birthday was back in March and it was the first weekend I was kind of um, here full-time and so we went to Bristol and ate some um, fun ways places down, a barbecue joint down there that was really, really delicious. And, uh, but other than that, for the most part, ate for, at a place in uh, St. Paul one Sunday afternoon, and that was delicious. They had the best and hugest portion of banana pudding, and I love banana pudding. Good in chili, outstanding view, thank you. 
going to uh, South Dakota. Wow. Um, I have not been to South Dakota. I have somebody who did go to South Dakota, and I heard that there was not, um, maybe that was North Dakota. Anyway, it was very flat, and the roads were very straight. <laughs> For riding a bike, it's not a lot of fun, but um, maybe, I don't know what area you're going to, but um, I used to have a Hayabusa, so we did a lot of riding, but I didn't make, like, trips on it. I wasn't a... I wasn't a long distance rider. Longest distance I probably rode was from Greer, South Carolina down to Atlanta for a race. A couple of hours on a motorcycle on the interstate when people are just terrible drivers is a big no thank you for me. How do I water my plants? So I'm actually probably going to run a drip hose down this uh, row here because I have so many plants that are going in there and it particularly like my tomatoes and peppers um, so I'm thinking about running a drip hose I already have the drip hose that I could run down here I'm also on a well so I don't want to be um, watering a ton hopefully we uh, can do okay with the water I'm trying to also plan to set up a water harvesting system off of this roof of this barn that's right here behind you guys and uh, Maybe that way I can get some water catchment to use in the garden as well. But I plan to um, hand water a good bit. If you do that in the morning and in the evenings, um, usually your plants will be just fine and you don't have to saturate. Um, there are some kind of plants that you do need to really, really saturate them. But um, a lot of times I would run my irrigation hose in the evening, maybe 45 minutes. Look at the sky. <laughs> coming over here and being nosy. What you doing, Bubba? But, um, yes, that's how I I uh, water my plants. I try to ground water them. I don't ever water them where I do some sort of sprinkler. Look at him. He is just all up in my business. Yes, yeah, some Nana pudding. I don't feel like the, these are definitely a different variety of strawberry for than this that I just put in the ground, which has a, a little bit softer of an edge. Hello, Mojo. I'm not going to be weeding this. I'm going to put some um, straw over top and hopefully I'll do it thick, thick enough that it will kill out any weeds that are here. I'm going to stand on this side so I can oh, tilt y'all more towards the horse. It's like when the animals are around, you never know if they're going to do something funny. So no, this is not my horse. It's my neighbor's horse. Um, there's two of them that are right here behind me actually and they roam my property and her property because I bought it from her and we haven't fenced it off yet so those are her two babies black ones a female and they just call her big black and then they call this one baby <laughs> but whenever I see them I just call them ponies because that's what I um, call my baby pony that's over there and everybody gets excited, so. Hi. Hello, Missouri. Hi, Jeff. I'm in Virginia. I'm planting strawberries. I have horses behind me. Glad you're joining us. So, not yet. Knock on some wood here. Um, 
They have not. They get in the backyard fine, which is like maybe 30 feet from here, but they have not come up into the garden yet. I do have it half sided with wire that makes it difficult, but the rest of it is not. So I, uh, I am prepared to do the work to get them, keep them out if things happen. I have some of the fencing I've just not been proactive. I just watch. And uh, my dogs run around in the yard a lot, so I think that scares them away from certain areas. But they get in the backyard, which is just right there, just fine. Thank you so much. Howdy, darling. Pretty happy with these strawberry plants so far. Um, I don't know what the mountain up is here that everybody likes to ride on. Back home, that was the uh, tail of the dragon back in the day in Tennessee uh, for the for my area of motorcycles, which I mean, people with sports cars like to do it as well. But um, when I was in upstate South Carolina, that's where everybody was. If you've ridden Tell of the Dragon on your motorcycle, that was like a um, rite of passage. I have not done that. I have no interest in doing that. I did, when I had my motorcycle, I was more interested in drag racing um, if I was going to do anything slightly dangerous. Nice to meet you as well, KC. I uh, just moved here. I get a very teary eyed when I, in the evenings, the sun will be setting here in a little while. And it kind of turns the mountains like kind of peak and different shades and it shadows hit it all kind of beautifully. And I get a little teary eyed of um, just seeing it. Do I can strawberries? I, 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 the, I make them into jams, like jam, strawberries, a little sugar, a little pectin, make it into a jelly. I gift it. That's what I do with strawberries. If mostly that's what I do if I buy strawberries and I get an abundance of them because whenever I buy it I like want to buy a lot but um, when I grow my own strawberries which is not a ton of them that I've ever grown I uh, usually just eat them because I like to eat a lot of fruits so I'm in Lebanon Virginia Russell County South West Virginia Southwest Virginia, not West Virginia. Um, but yeah, so I'm really close to the uh, Tennessee, Tennessee state line. Bristol is like right over that mountain. Thank you, Elmo. This is actually a pretty good little strawberry. This is um, from, again, this is from South Carolina. I plucked this up and put it in a tub with some dirt on Tuesday when I was down there. So we're gonna try this guy. This is one of my first strawberries that I'm trying of the year of my own. And I don't use any kind of spray or nothing. This is like all natural, so. Mm. It's red throughout and good. Mm. It's not terribly sweet and that may be the variety and it may be water, like how it got watered in the beginning of the season. I haven't even, I have been back to South Carolina maybe once every couple weeks so they haven't gotten any water. Those are just strawberry plants that I put in, in the ground actually like three years ago. And strawberries just spread on their own. So you can have a huge strawberry patch in no time. And that's kind of what I had going on down there. So I just harvested a few and brought them up here. Um, this guy is not happy. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. But anyway, so hopefully these will do well. I love strawberries too. Um, I don't fertilize my garden really. I have some um, 
compost that I bought two years ago and some of that I moved up here from South Carolina. So I just moved my mini farm two and a half, three and a half acres down in South Carolina to up here. I bought 35 acres in Virginia. So I've never put any kind of spray on my garden. If I do anything, I try to do all natural stuff. If I see a bug and I target that bug, but I don't, um, I don't do an over, overall spray because I don't, I'm really bad about washing my vegetables and fruits when I eat them myself. I'll just eat stuff out of the garden. So who wants to eat toxins? Hey, thanks. I try to have some good energy. Watermelons, I grew, I've got a watermelon plant or two that I grew from seed that's in my greenhouse. So I'm gonna try to put them out, but only after I prep my soil a little bit, do a little bit more to the garden because I really want it to grow. <laughs> Thanks for gifties. So I'm going to try to grow some watermelon. I have some cantaloupes, cantaloupes, cantaloupes. Um, I also have, I call them mini melons, but they're like mini cantaloupes. And um, they only, they only grow to like this big, but they look exactly the same on the inside. So I, uh, I've got those that are already sprouting in there. I'm going to try to do some squash and I do have some butternuts that uh, butternut squash plants that look really really healthy and vibrant and last year I had like one butternut squash no maybe two two butternut squash plants that like took off and gave me a ton and I use that to um, make dog food so I make my own dog food for one of my dogs and I do try to grow, I'm gonna be trying to grow more things that go into my dog food. Cherry tomatoes, I do plan to get a lot of, um, get some more cherry tomatoes because I like those, I just like to eat them. But I do have some, um, I have a variety of cherry tomato growing. It's not like your typical cherry to tomato. Um, watermelons do take up a ton of space. I did a small one, I can't remember. I have to look and see. People had given me some seeds, so. I planted some of those too. Watermelons and pumpkins, they take up a lot of room, they take up a lot of water. So I'll make sure I give them a little bit more love. Um, so kale, I have done some um, kale before. That's crazy about kale is it will just grow and grow and grow and grow. I don't really eat a lot of kale, but what I did is I, um, I just like to grow seeds. So I planted it and I fed the kale a lot of times to my goats and pony, um, just cause I'm not a huge fan. So um, I have not really planted spinach, not in giving it effort. I think I have planted it, but I did not give it a lot of effort, so I don't remember it being fruitful. But the kale, I had um, one, two kale plants that I used all year, one year, and then it stayed alive all winter and then just came right back the following year. Um, very large and bright, vibrant, huge plant. The stalk of that kale plant got to this big around before um, and ended up, I think aphids took that guy out eventually. Um, but I was uh, really surprised how uh, a valiant effort that plant stayed, uh, tried to stay alive. So this is not a raised garden bed, it's a no-dig garden on a slope. So I have wood here and that's because in the way that property is falling that I, I for it being a brand new garden, I first put down cardboard, I then put down this wood just for when I'm dumping the dirt in here so it didn't go sliding off the side of the hill. And eventually, as I work on this garden bed, it is going to be kind of dome shaped and it will be me adding more dirt and mulch to it. So it'll be a really um, kind of dome shaped row. I will have three rows. I only have this one full row and I'm at the bottom of it. So I have a long ways up there at the top and these strawberries. 
and I'm planting some asparagus is at the very bottom because I can go a little bit further out here than I did this year just this as far as I'm going but I plan to do another one over here with some I'm gonna do a couple of arches with green beans and some smaller squash plants and then I plan to do a third row here and then surrounding this whole area is I have apple trees I have blueberries I have blackberries mulberries uh, mulberry trees pear trees I eventually in the years to come this will be an orchard and berry patch and a permaculture kind of all integrated type of setup but for this year it is also going to be for the next couple of years it'll probably also be my three garden beds here um, and then in another part of the property I'm going to plant corn and okra and sunflowers the really tall stuff in another area next to my greenhouse that I'm going to be putting up so I have lots of big plans for the future but I'm starting small um, I do most of the gardening So I will be planting some corn this year. I've done it before, um, but I only planted a few. Um, I am going to try to plant some corn along with some okra. I'm on the side of a hill and it does get very, very windy. So I'm hoping to plant corn and okra and sunflowers, kind of bunch those up together and help them be wind breaks for each other. And um, where I'm going to be putting them at maybe next to either the greenhouse or one of our workshop buildings so that um, I can hopefully try to keep them upright as long as possible to see if they will harvest a lot of what I'm doing out here this year is going to be trial and error and we'll just see what makes it and what is good good evening I have some more strawberry plants to put in here, but I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I have a few asparagus starts that I'm going to put into here. And um, then I'm going to cover this area in straw really heavy to try to keep the strawberries up off of the dirt. And um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I love the background sounds too, so that's why unless somebody asks me something, I usually just work and if somebody says something to me, I will respond. Otherwise, I'll just let you listen to the birds. So, I don't know, I need to, to measure that. I can kind of give you a visual idea. So, my garden starts up here next to my chicken coop, and I have this bed, this row over here is not completed. This is the long row that goes all the way down to there. And that is probably as big of any other garden that I, that one row, um, as one I've ever done. But I've got this other row already started where I've put the cardboard down and starting to get the dirt and all of those things in there and that's going to be some green beans on that side and some of the squash and I've got to try to get that down there and then this where I'm standing right here up to my garden gate is going to be a third row and that may be some more late in the season planters I'm not trying to stress myself out too much to uh, 
get get it all accomplished too quickly. If it just doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So I do a little bit at a time and uh, plant my things. But I need to measure how long those rows are because it's, it's a lot of space for me. I've been gardening now about five years, but um, this is the biggest space I definitely ever had by that one by that one row all on its own. I have this huge sage plant that I brought up from South Carolina this um, past weekend when I was down there at my garden there and I got to figure out where I want to put him. I think it's really awesome that he overwintered even with our freeze we had it was down to five degrees down there and he still died, did not die off so bravo to him. I smell like sage and oregano. It's really good down here. Hmm. So I'm in Lebanon, Virginia, Russell County, Virginia, and that's the Clint Mount, Clinch Mountain Range, mountain line that you're seeing over there. I'm out here doing a little work in the garden, but I will take out along with me right now to feed my goats and pony because they've been talking to me. That's Hank, Hank the goat. This is Rainy Pony, who's running him off. And this is my older fella here, that's Dozer. How loud can I burp? I don't know. I think it would depend on the beverage. And I'm not drinking anything right now. So 
at the moment how loud can I bur burp? None. Like, none. Because I'm not drinking anything to, uh, to do that. Oh, I need bowls. I don't have their bowls. Let's go get their bowls. This is my turkey. Her name's Linda. I hatched her from an egg that was given to me. What do I feed the goats and chickens? So my goats and pony get um, mostly hay or eating grass. And then in the evenings, I feed them just uh, about a third of a cup of sweet feed. Um, my oldest goat gets a supplement for his little achy joints. And um, so I can't just give it to him and not give it to the others. So everybody just gets a little bit of sweet feed. It's really bad for goats to have grain, period. Um, not really bad. They just shouldn't. Um, it can cause them to get issues with urinating and get blocked up and blah, blah, blah. A lot of, a lot of medical stuff to it. So anyway, I just um, give them just a little bit with their supplement, which is this. It actually just came in the mail today, but um, that's my backup jug because I have it. Appreciate you being here. Don't work too hard. But yeah, so, and then my chickens, um, they get, I um, have an all grain feed that's like really healthy and super expensive. And I wet that down and I give it to them in the morning with some just normal multi bird, all, it's called all flock. I, don't, I think it's a Purina brand. I don't remember, but um, I give them that as their pellet layer feed. And then I also give them this like healthy all grain stuff that I soak in water overnight usually before I give it to them so to uh and, and I give them stuff out of the garden all of them get stuff out of the garden that's a lot of reasons why I grow the garden that I do granted I want to eat it too but um to have fresh things to feed them goats and pony and chickens and whoever and I want to get better at gardening so I can share that more So this is their little grain, and essentially I get two cups and I split it amongst the three of them with the pony getting the most because she's the biggest. So I'm going to leave y'all on the outside because I won't be able to hold you if I take you in, but I'll do this right here so you should be able to see as I go in. to hang out in here because sometimes they bully one another, but it won't take them no time to eat.
So the age difference between the brown goat and the white goat is is like eight years. My brown goat dozer, he's ten or eleven, and uh, Hank is two or three. The white one. Happy birthday! Is today your birthday, really? How old are you turning? How about that? Hey there, Mad Dog. I drive through North Carolina all the time. This is Virginia, where I'm currently located, and I just moved here from South Carolina, and I'm still moving stuff. So I drive through, I drive up 26 between. Greenville, South Carolina area, and here in Virginia, pretty, pretty frequently. How do chickens laying eggs? My, my chickens lay eggs pretty good. Um, we'll go and take a look and see what they've done today. Um, my turkey laid an egg today as well, so I've got to go grab that. But I was going to throw some hay for my... Okay, let's go, uh, let's go take a look at some eggs. So this is Linda. Linda is my turkey. And I have a turkey, a tom turkey, that I can go and adopt in a farm rescue in Greenwood, South Carolina. Hodges, South Carolina. Um, and I just got to go down there and get him. Because if I did, then Linda and him could have babies together. I've got a duck under her roost. Ow, hit my head. It's cool. Here's Linda. Linda's egg today. Speckled big thing here. West of me, yes. What kind of travel do you do? So, um, since I've been doing this move last year, I haven't been able to travel very much, but um, the past three years I've gone to Alaska. Um, 2020, 2021, and 2022. I plan to get there again this fall. And I'm actually looking at property out there as well. Um, I want to do a lot of travel now that I'm here in Virginia. Um, I've been done animal rescue for 22 years of my life. And my house was always full of animals. So I never got to really do a lot of traveling. Until I started making the decision about 3-4 years ago. I'm going to travel. Like I just really started making that a focus. And so I started visiting all the little places around where I was in upstate South Carolina that I'd never been before. Some places that were only an hour or two away, but I just had never, ever gone. So now that I'm up here in Virginia, there are so many places that are here in the area that I want to go to. I want to go to the Grand Canyon, not obviously not near here. That's a big one that I, I know that's so touristy, but I just want to see that vastness and um, some of the areas around there. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research there. I want to drive. We'd want to do a drive to Alaska. Um, I want to do a drive where I kind of go up towards Montana and go to Colorado and drive down to Utah, Arizona area and do a big sweep. So prior to living here on the farm, I was living in a camper um, in between my, so all my chickens are up in their little roost for the night. This is a a trailer that I bought down in South Carolina just to make a makeshift uh, chicken coop until I could actually have time to make an actual chicken coop. So today, one of my gray girls, she's an olive egger, so she laid me an olive egg, and this is probably one of my black copper Morans. Um, so all of my girls are old, over two years old, so I don't get a ton of eggs. I only have six, six ladies plus my turkey. Let me not, hopefully not drop these eggs because I don't have my basket out here. Hold on just a second. Aha. So I lock them up in there at night like they're super, super contained until I can finish securing this, the 
top of this chicken coop, although it's covered, there is areas that a predator could get in at the top and possibly at the bottom if they tried to rip the fencing away. So my plan is, and I've already started a little bit, I'm hardwire meshing all, the entire thing will be hardwire meshed. And that way it'll also keep out mice and rats, which I had a problem with at my previous. I didn't have any problems with large predators um, at my previous place, but my the rats got in there and uh, there's mice getting in here now. So if you hardwire mesh all of that, then you don't have that issue. Yeah, so I did, uh, yeah, in an RV. So, yeah, I would like to do some traveling um, more so. We've had a travel RV that just, like, went to the lake and such, but I would like to do some long-term driving once I get um, some other things set up here to be able to leave the farm and have caretakers here. So... I put myself in a predicament again where I can't really do a lot of traveling for the next little bit, but my dog's being a kook. Annabelle! But, um, yeah, that's my plan to get back to traveling soon enough. I don't know why you're so happy you're not going in the house yet. I gotta go close up the garden. Well, when I um, lived at my old place, I had um, caretakers that were from the area. I had pet sitters. I had a personal assistant down there. And um, all of them just kind of worked together to take care of the farm when I was away. And uh, when this place is more set up, um, this is going to be... A, I'm, I'm building an educational homestead with farm stays up here. So... I plan on having caretakers that stay on the property to help oversee the gardens and things. So, like I said, I've only been up here full-time about six weeks. And uh, so those things are in the works. Um, hoping to get our, our primitive campground started opening in the next um, week or two. And then I have some really cute A-frames that we're building. And, uh, yeah, just working on working on really growing a space that everybody can enjoy. And um, so, yeah, I will have caretakers on the farm to come and take care of things when I'm gone. And uh, I oversee that stuff. Like, usually by the time I go again, um, I have camera in the chicken coop. I have a camera in my animal's room inside. Like, I keep an eye on things so that I can even make sure that caretakers are, you know, really doing what they need to do. But... That is so nice that you have retired and are doing that now. I um, I decided to uh, just, I completely shifted up the game last year and sold my house. I was in 16 years and now I'm doing this. I have people that come with me, just friends, family. Um, I, uh, for travel experiences, for me, I, it's more fun to have people that I can share and have memories of that with. I know a lot of people that like to travel solo, but when I travel, I have people with me. Looks like the sun has gone down. Oh, but look at the moon. Oh my goodness. Can you see it? Like, wow, look at it. It's huge. From where I'm standing, it's massive, which is probably why there is, um, for the a planting of the signs, it's probably because it is a full moon today is why they're, it's such a fertile time frame. You can still kind of see the sun setting. That's Brumley Mountain over there behind the horses. And the sun is setting over there. If I ran to my setup, my sunset spot, I could probably see it. But I would lose you guys because the um, internet does not work over there. I'm going to try to get these two big plants in the ground right here. This is just the only place I know to do them. 
And then I may try to go and see what the sunset is looking like. a huge oregano bush and I was very awkward in how I um, like retrieved it out of the ground so I don't quite know how I want to plant it I'll just go with that that's another thing I've been trying to plant um, certain herbs around certain plants to hopefully ward off things from eating them Alright friends, I'm going to uh, keep you on until either my phone dies um, or my battery runs out and we're going to walk down to try to see the sunset and which is on a good view on the other side of the property. I don't know if we'll be able to keep our signal going down there but uh got some strawberries planted I got some herbs planted I'm gonna give them a little watering before I go in for the evening and uh, I might stick some peppers in the ground let's run over to the sunset location and see what we can see I think it's already down but it's still a pretty pretty place for views I'm pretty stoked about this moon over here I don't think I've ever seen it that big. I tell you, one of the first, oh, let's see, it washes it out. There we go. I am in the west part of Virginia, yes. Lebanon, Virginia is the town. I'm not in the town limits, but it's technically the address of the property, Lebanon, near Castlewood. So, we'll see. If I can keep the uh, signal a little longer. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining. We're going to um, try to go and see the sunset. But my... Oh, it isn't, it isn't set yet. If I happen to lose you, I'll try to record it and uh, post it to my page later. Look at this good guy. He's here visiting with my pony. Rainy pony. Hey, Bubba. Look how pretty. See, I've got my fly mask on. Yep, so there's my, my mountain I get to see. And I love this moon. I can't wait to take a picture of that. The first time, I've never seen a moon rise, and I was able to see that back in, I was probably up here just doing an overnight trip in February, and the it was already pitch black outside, and the moon came up over one of the hills like a sunrise, but it was the moon, and it was the most incredible thing I'd ever seen. I don't know if I'm going to keep signal walking down here, but we'll try. Take y'all to see the sunset. I plan to get some signal booster across the property, so maybe eventually I'll be able to do that more. 